O2's commercial 5G launch date is penned for October, which is only in a few weeks time. This is following on from commercial launches by EE, Vodafone and 3 respectively. Now understandably with October looming rapidly, O2 have been very busy deploying 5G across their network in the UK. And in today's video I am specifically going to focus on their O2 Ericsson zone which covers the northeast of England, where I am now, Scotland, well, most of Scotland, and Northern Ireland. O2 is using two 5G deployment architectures in their Ericsson zone, ATAR and Massive MIMO. And in fact, these two architectures are the ways that other providers similarly are deploying 5G. Massive MIMO in the really dense built up areas and 88R elsewhere. First, I will talk about the 88R 5G deployments because I alluded to the layout all the way back in December 2018 when I covered the O2 Ericsson Beacon 2 high capacity layout. So these sites have Huawei AQU antennas which carry the frequency division duplex, 2G, 3G and high capacity 4G deployments. Quite a complicated layout involving triplexes to support the high build for 4G on 2100 megahertz as well as 2600 megahertz for Vodafone. Meanwhile, the other antennas on these builds are Huawei ATD antennas. Now, these have two sets of ports on them. Eight, which are for the 2300 MHz ATAR for O2, so that's their 4G TDD capacity layer, but eight ports remained free. Now, these are in the frequency range of 5G, and therefore it comes as no surprise that O2's ATAR 5G build populates these ports and uses Ericsson 8823 remote radios, which are ATAR for the frequency range N78 that O2 will be operating their initial 5G launch on. Notably to say with these sites though is with the, in the case of Vodafone, which is the sharing network. So they are 44R, L26, L21 and L08. You can get very nice speeds. So I've got over 300 megabits per second on 4G off these. Meanwhile, O2 obviously have the ATAR 2300 megahertz and 44R, 2100 megahertz 4G, 1800 megahertz 4G, 2C2R and the standard 800 megahertz 4G. And actually that 3CA, L08, L18, and L21 with 44R itself I've got well over 250 megabits per second on which is incredible and that's thanks to 44R and the higher ranks yielding very nice throughputs. So of course having 5G on top of this will hopefully yield very nice speeds. The massive MIMO architecture on the sites is in terms of the frequency division duplex passive wise very similar to the previous mast example so the frequency division duplex equipment goes to four high band feeders in each sector and there are four low band feeders as well except passive antenna wise this is really quite different so this is using a huawei a144521 R0 V06 as the passive antenna. So this has six high ultra wide band ports of which four are in use and four low band ports, all four are in use. However, this antenna has cluster ports. It has two cluster ports which do ATAR for 2300 MHz 4G for O2. And it has two cluster ports which can then do ATAR 5G. Except this site, of course, has the Ericsson Massive MIMO panels on it, which are the smaller panels, which are most likely Ericsson Air 6488, 
because that's what we saw on some earlier trial O2 5G sites and also it's what other networks are using quite commonly in Europe as well. Now both these sites are in central Leeds which is just a quick hop away on the train from where I'm filming this in Scarborough so hopefully I will be able to pop by and test these once O2 launches their 5G in potentially only about a week and a bit from when I'm filming this. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed watching this. Sorry it's a bit shaky. I didn't realise how cold it would get out here um, so quickly. So, whoops. Um, I'm going to head in now.